So now bone mineral density now is becoming more available, but still pediatric DEXAs or pediatric assessment is not easily available. So not everybody requires a bone density. So there are recommendations by the uh, Bone Mineral Society which talk about which children will require bone density. Celiac disease basically, we have done many studies in terms of bone density and what is your take on that summary of that, Vani? It is more for sample and more for celiac But do we have fractures in celiac? So it's it's there. The bone density is less by around minus one typical Z score, but it is not severe enough to cause fractures. So again, you don't need to do it in everybody. If somebody is having a bad control, has a delayed puberty or anemia, then you can think of it. Cerebral palsy, this is an area where getting a density done is not easy because of the body structure and the contorted shape as well. Assessing that is not easy. But if you have a fragility fracture, you have to worry about bone density. DMD is something which you should do at baseline and annually. If that is there, treat early. Because as I said, it's one of the major cause of morbidity and mortality in DMD, a pathological fracture. If you somebody has juvenile idiopathic arthritis on steroids, so what the recommendations is that if you are less than six years, do it only if the fracture is there. More than six years, the doses above 0.2 milligram per kg per day, you should do a BMD as we discussed in the ACR guidelines. ALL, again, not in the initial phase, but to look at long-term effects after the chemo is over, you can look after two years after chemotherapy. Cystic fibrosis, again, after you have got eight years, if other things are happening, steroid treatment is going on, failure to thrive, you should think of. Type 1 diabetes, we don't routinely do, but of course, if there is a fracture, you have to think of bone density. Anorexia nervosa, again, you know the bone mass is less, but if amenorrhea is more than six months, one should do that. And this is important, glucocorticoid use, prednisolone above 0.15 for more than three months, and then you follow up from that regards. Now, what are the pointers of low bone density? Bone pain, is bone pain a good pointer? So bone pain is a very, very vague complaint. Significant fracture is, what really is a significant fracture? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so 50% of boys and 40% of girls will have fractures. This is well known. What are the most common age group in which fractures happen? Why? Yes. So the length of the bone increases first and then the calcification happens. So around that age group, especially this police fracture and those things will become very, very important. Anybody with a spinal fracture is clearly a very bad scenario. Long bone fracture, as you said, two below 10 years and three below 18 years are indications for assessment of the bone density. If, of course, you have an underlying condition, if you are somebody on steroids, these are the indications you will treat. Now, when you talk about bone strength, as I said, it's not just density, it's not just quantity, it's also the quality. And the things we decide quality are the size, that's why longer bones are better. Density, of course, thickness of the cortex is very, very important, and the thickness of the bone as well. So it's the thickness both scenario, and how is the internal geometry. So all these things will become important. When you're looking at bone density, you're just looking at density. You're not looking at any other thing. So this is something which is a drawback as far as DEXA is concerned. And these things become absolutely important from that regards. So what we can do, we can look at X-ray. Many of the experienced uh, orthopedicians will say this is osteoporosis. But by the time you're picking up on X-ray, it's like 25% of the bone is lost. So it's not something which is going to be of help. Quantitative ultrasound, you would have seen many people do this. It's useless. It's like as good as not doing anything. It will have a lot of variability. It's not a good measure of bone density. Bone biopsy is the gold standard, but not being done clinically, of course, because of obvious reason. DEXA is the most commonly done uh, test for bone density. Peripheral quantitative CT scan is going to give you information about volumetric density. And micro MRI is not available, which is also giving you information about 
the geometry of the bone as well. But most of us will be doing DEXA, PQCT being more for a research perspective on that regards. So quantitative ultrasound, as I said, is based upon the speed of sound and how do you reflect and speed of sound will be different. In diff so if you have a weaker bone, theoretically, if you have a less denser bone, it will travel less, more density. So what is the relationship between density and velocity of sound? So if there is a more density, it will be more or less? So which has got more density, solid, liquid, gas? Solid, so it's quicker in solid. So it's directly proportional to density. So more dense bone, it will travel faster. This is the basic principle based upon that. Site is calcaneum and os, and then you will get some this thing, but it has got very poor correlation with overall information. DEXA or dual energy X-ray absorbimetry is the gold standard in many scenarios for assessment of bone age, bone density. So this is a dual energy thing. So what do you mean by dual energy? Hmm. On both sides. What do you mean by both sides? So you will basically get the of different intensities. So this is important. So X-ray is like a single beam. So this is a dual beam. That's the most important part. Why do you have a dual beam? Like different So the attenuation constant or the let's say how much of the beam is absorbed will be different for fat, for muscle, for bone. And if you use two different energy beams, one will go through high energy will cross quickly, low energy will cross less. By differentiating the two, you will get a much better picture in that regard. So it's based upon two different energy beams with differential intake. You can do a whole body, femur, lumbar spine or forearm. The limitation is that there are a lot of confounding factors which we'll touch base a bit and interpretation and the reference that you're using is also important to understand. So basically what you have, you have an energy source. You have got an energy source which is there from here and you have got two energy beams, 70 and 140 millivolts which is then collimated, straightened, and it goes in the detector. So from in between, the person is lying there. So of course, different tissues that will penetrate through that. You have to do a calibration really using a phantom, which is of known density. You put it there and see if your machine is doing fine in terms of that. Precision should be less than 1% variation. And the reference range should be ideally local, with good numbers. But unfortunately, we do not have very good data in terms of Indian children. So we rely more in terms of Western database data, which is there for bone density in that regards. So the most common machines which are available are the GE and the Horogic. And we have got both of them. The GE is out there in the other hospital and Horogic is in the city clinic. There's also a newer version of GE, which is known as IDEXA, which gives some about more information in that regards. So GE DPX basically gives a C arm sort of a thing. So it's like a C from which you've got this. Otherwise, you've got a wide beam and a narrow beam, which is there. There are two detectors as compared to multiple detectors. The dense, the radiation exposure is more for Hologic and IDEXA, but still it is much lower compared to a X-ray. Bone edge detection can be done. Time will be lower for more energetic procedures. So this is the way, but usually five minutes you will get the results in that regards. So now which site to choose becomes important. So you can do a total body in which entire body is done or you can do TBLH, which is better total body versus total body less head. Why? So why are you bothered about head density? If head is broken, then mostly there will be a very bad scenario. So that's why the a reason that you're doing BMD is to look at fracture risk. So you're talking about fracture risk, so this head is not going to contribute to that scenario. So TBLH is what is the most commonly used in children. You can look at lumbar spine, femur, proximal femur, or forearm. So typically when we order, we say either we say whole body, TBLH basically, and then we'll say, okay, femur, lumbar spine, and forearm. These three sites are the most commonly ones which are there. 
so for infants we use total body less head and we use bone mineral content we do not use bone mineral content z score because the z scores are not reliable at this age group 2 to 5 years we will use bmc and we will also do bmd d means density so what is the formula of density density is mass upon volume but here it's area when you read the reading they will say cent gram per centimeter square so this is a aerial bmd not a volumetric bmd 5 to 18 years you can use either tblh or lumbar spine as well and you use bmc bmd and z scores above 18 years you do a total body less head which is less commonly used you can do lumbar and femur and bmc bmd t scores now in somebody who has restriction in terms of movement you can do a radius imaging reduced weight bearing you can do a proximal femur and non ambulatory you can do a lateral femur so special positions are there which can be used out this is what you will get in the results so you have got this different regions you have got the bmd bone mineral density and then you come get the bmc and the area so if you look at bmd they are saying gram per centimeter square so this is not really a density it's a misnomer from that perspective so this is what you will get you will get a t score and you will get a z score what is the difference between z score and t score what is the z score height z score something like that you compare to same age same gender t score you compare to as dhwani was saying adult caucasian female so all the references based upon that so if you do a z score in a child or a t score in a child which is better yes, yes t score does it make a sense you haven't had the opportunity for the bones to grow so why are you comparing with somebody it's like comparing apple to oranges that is something which is there so z score is what we should be looking at children you have to give information about demographics why you are doing it puberty becomes important and ideally we can use bone age as a surrogate so if you somebody has a very delayed bone age maybe you can put okay cleverly rather than putting 14 years his bone age is 10 years you put 10 years as his age then you will get the right picture in that regards you give the model now remember every machine has its own way of doing a bone density so you cannot extrapolate result from here to there you can't say that the g bmd of 0.6 gram per centimeter square is same as a holologic 0.6 for meter square so you should use the same machine and software type the beam type the precision becomes important the output you get is bone mineral content bone mineral area bone mineral density z score t score and all those things which we showed now what really means when you get that result so if your z score is above minus 2 it is normal if it's below minus 2 do not call it osteoporosis it is low bone mass below minus 2 with fracture you will call it osteoporosis if you have a spinal compression whatever your bmd is there is a osteoporosis which is there now what are the limitations as i said size determines the bone density especially the aerial one puberty does software whether you are using a adult software or a pediatric software there can be variations references whether it's local or not obesity it may be difficult to assess and there can be some artifacts which can cause problems there the most important is size so if you have looking basically here you're talking about a projection of this image on a plane so it's a two dimensional image rather than really a, a sort of a three dimensional image so if you say these two boxes a and b with the same density you will find how this size will make a difference so what you are saying this is 2 cm so in 2 cm the volume is 8 volumetric bmd is 2 but area is 4 so aerial bmd becomes 4 you getting but now if you talk about this is 3 cm its volume becomes 27 so volumetric density is the same but falsely the aerial bmd will be high so this is a basic flaw in dexa in that if you are using it for a smaller bone they will look weak to you longer bone will look strong to you from that perspective so you can adjust that there are some adjustment formulas which are there don't go too much into detail but you do is that you correct for the height for age 
and bone area for height and then you compare that from that perspective. There are ways of apparent density you can use and then there is a model in which you look at the lean mass and dynamic test to get the correct information. So basically if you have size issues, then you can use measures in which adjustment will help you out in that perspective. Now very importantly, often many places you have got an adult software which is available. Pediatric software is not available. Then you will get wrong reports. Will you be underestimating or overestimating the bone? Underestimating. Why? So what is the difference between an adult software and a pediatric software? So the bones in children are uh, less dense as compared to adults or the vice versa? So, how do you say this is bone? So, for the machine, it's not that you know this is bone, it can't see. So, you have cut off that if your density is about this, this is a fat, below this is fat, this is muscle, this is bone. So, how do you decide this is bone will be different for a child and different for an adult. So, for having adult, you will say, okay, the density is more. So, you'll be only picking the more denser regions of the skeleton. So, your total bone mineral content will be less, but the density will be more. So, if you use an adult BMD, you will overestimate the BMD of a child. So, if I'll give you an example. So, what they're saying is that this is pediatric and this is adult. You see the total bone area, they're saying 1810 here. But here, it's only 1315, which means that around 495 uh, centimeter square of bone was neglected. Because it was lesser than that, it's not picking up. So what is happening? You're only picking up. If you have 100 children to pick up, you pick up only 80 and 20 weak children you leave. So the average performance will improve in that. So what you have done is that only the good bones were picked up. That is why your density from 0.759 became 874. So adult BMD will give you lesser area, but denser bone and higher density. This is a problem there. So then you can use a peripheral quantitative CT, which is basically like a micro CT, gives you information about bone quality. You can use it for trabecular bone and cortical bone. The trabecular bone I said is at the edges. So 4% site and 30% site. This is how, and radius you can use 66% site. You will get information about density, volumetric density. It also gives you indication about stress strain index. What is the risk of fracture? These all things you will get it. So you get axial moment of inertia, stress strain index, and many other information which will give you from that regards. Now, many people are concerned about the radiation dose. The overall dose is extremely less. The XI is 0.5, PQCT is slightly more, but X-ray hand itself is big. Bone scan is huge. And even if you have a background radiation, is much more compared to the routine DEXA. So DEXA is safe in terms of bone density from that perspective. So we'll just close with a couple of cases. 11-year-old girl with bone pain, honey, no fractures, normal growth and development, no predisposing factor of family history. TBLH BMD is minus 1.8. So there's no reason to do a BMD also in this case. Because as I said, unless you have got fractures, why do it? Bone pain is a vague scenario. So you should not do a BMD here. Vitamin D is low, which will improve with that. Dr. Sandhi, 14-year-old boy, fall while playing, has a fracture in the distal radius. <clears throat> There's no family history, no predisposing factors, and BMD is minus 2.2. So, what do you think? Okay. So, it is not a very, very significant scenario. So, it's prepubertal, bone age is delayed. So, this assessment may not be appropriate. And it's normal for the bone age when you correct it from that perspective. 12-year-old girl fall while playing. Three episodes with trivial fall. Is it significant? Very significant. Normal growth and development. DEXA score is not that bad. Exactly. So she was advised treatment. Now, remember what sort of software was used. So this could be a scenario that they are using the adult software. In this, this BMD is falsely high. So here, when you use a pediatric software, you will get the right Z score picture, 
which becomes important. So we have talked a lot about etiology of low bone mass assessment. We'll talk about management of low bone mass in the second session. I'll take if there are any questions. Refeeding syndrome, basically, yes, Dr. Mehta, that is a scenario in which suddenly you have insulin excess, which causes hypokalemia, pushing the potassium phosphorus into the cells. You should correct magnesium. You should correct phosphorus in uh, anorexia nervosa in that regards. Thank you.